We're live. So I'll just start the backup recordings. Or in start. Cloud started. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I ask everyone to please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, and welcome to the stated meeting of December 17th, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori, and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Blessed and present. Morelli. I'm here, thank you. Brannon. Present. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Cohen. I'm here. Constantinides. I'm present. Carnegie. Here. Deutsch. I'm here. Councilmember Dharma Diaz. Present. Councilmember Ruben Diaz. Drum. Here. Eugene. Gibson. Blessed Thursday, everyone. I'm here. Jonah. I'm sorry, Eugene is here, present. Thank you, council member. All right. Present. Thank you. Grudenchik. Present. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Who? Present. Kozlowitz. Lander. Here, thank you. Levin. Levine. Here. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. I'm here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Malone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. I'm here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Pastor Yolanda Batts, the spiritual leader at Celebration Spiritual Center, located at 1360 Fulton Street in Brooklyn. Welcome. Well, thank you, council members. It is indeed an honor to be here. We gather, bringing this unprecedented year of change, 
pause and restoration to a close. During this season of light, we convene not to curse the darkness, but to be the light. Each of us a candle of truth. Please close your eyes and open your heart to connect to the higher power of your understanding. Mother, Father, God, divine presence, known by many names and beyond all names, spirit of light, love, community, wisdom, justice, and peace. Illuminate these proceedings and bless those who have been called to govern this great city. Guide these leaders of the people, let them summon infinite intelligence, imagination, intuitive power to speak with authority and lead in new and exciting ways. Grant them the wisdom to replace conflict with consensus and passion for justice emanating from right-mindedness. Let these pioneers of progress listen to understand and speak with clarity and charity. May they work together in harmony and experience peace within their families this holiday season. And may this peace joyfully extend to every action taken by the New York City Council. Finally, bless today's agenda that it may unfold with grace, ease, and spiritual dignity. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, for renewed strength, the spirit of service, and the power of conviction to govern our beloved community in ways that works for everyone. A new day is dawning. Let the light and power of love be activated here today. I release these words back into the light of truth that joins us all and will never be extinguished. Amen, Ashe, and so it is. Thank you, thank you for that very enlightening prayer. I know that uh, Council Member Cornegie is eager and excited uh, to spread the invocation onto the record and I'll call on him at this time. And thank you so much, Pastor Bats, for being here with us today. You are so welcome, thank you. Good afternoon, Pastor. Um, I am incredibly, uh, uh, I feel incredibly blessed because I get to share a campus uh, with your ministry. So I get residual blessings constantly. So it's good to see you. Yolanda, yes. Yolanda Batts is co-founder, co-pastor of Celebration Spiritual Center, CSC in Brooklyn. CSC is an award-winning independent spiritual center teaching practical spirituality and bringing a fresh perspective to the new thought movement. Both she and Greg Stamper co-lead CSC and are the recent recipients of the New Thought Walden Award in, an, in, in interfaith and intercultural understanding. Pastor Yolanda, affectionately known as PY, is a powerful teacher, dynamic speaker, and engaging storyteller whose fearless transparency and unconditional love bring an innovative and fun approach to understanding sacred text. She began a life of service to God and community at an early age. Through educational, professional, and creative experience, that relationship continues to this day. In addition to being an ordained minister, she also holds an MA in both public policy and music theory, as well as being a certified yoga instructor. As a pastor, music, psychotherapist, meditation, and yoga instructor, she works with individuals to explore the spiritual, physiological, and psychological dimensions of human experience. She's concerned with dismantling the stigma of therapy, especially within communities of color. Her goal is to reimagine and redefine the therapeutic relationship as soul work, where the therapist and the patient work beyond limiting beliefs and arrive at a level of depth and beauty which promotes unity, consciousness, and healing. She continues to explore the mind-body connection in her work and is a dedicated student of the transcend transcendental meditation technique. As a yoga and meditation instructor, she assists students to connect with their inner source of unlimited joy, wisdom, and power. Yolanda believes that well-being is natural and that every individual is endowed with the ability to thrive. By using an integrative approach to health and healing, we can bring ourselves back into alignment with the source. For more than 20 years, Pastor Yolanda has been both student and teacher of a course in miracles. She's the creator of 50 Days to Fearless Living course and coaching program designed to access authentic, authentic power buried beneath layers of fear. Train the mind to be at peace and to live in joy. Create a miraculous life which allows opportunities to flow easily and effortlessly. She has experienced this personal transformation as well as witnessed it in the lives of those who listen to her dynamic sermons and participate in her powerful classes. As a gifted singer, songwriter, and producer, she is recording a solo project as well as plans to release a meditation CD. 
Answering the call to ministry is an extension of her personal desire to assist others in recognizing the magnificence of God within all around. Watch her message on YouTube at CSC's website at www.celebration.org. I don't know if I was supposed to do the, uh, the full commercial, but uh, Pastor, I I I'll ask for an, uh, an extra blessing on that one. Uh, Granted. <laughs> thank you, and I spread the uh, invocation over the record. Thank you. I think we now know the secret to your spiritual guide. Uh, and we thank you so much again, Pastor Batts, for being here. And thank you so much, Council Member Cornegie, for sharing your spiritual treasure with the entire council. Thank you, Ms. Thank, thank you. At this time, we will now have the adoption of minutes. None. Messages and papers from the mayor. M268, the appointment of Anthony Perez to the Economic Development Corporation. <clears throat> A moment. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered M's 269 and 270 budget modifications. Finance. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call ups. None. Thank you. And we will now have communication from our speaker, Corey Johnson. Good afternoon and a very happy Thursday to everyone. Uh, welcome to our final stated meeting of 2020. I hope that you all and your families are safe and well, uh, especially given the storm that we got overnight. Uh, this has been uh, the most challenging year for our city in recent times. And I'm proud of this council for finding creative ways to protect workers, small businesses, restaurants, arts and culture, and so many other New Yorkers during this difficult time, we are committed to strengthening our city and protecting our most vulnerable in the new year as well. And hopefully it will be a brighter one. Already we have been given a dose of hope this week from Pastor Bats, but also uh, where we saw our city received its first batch of vaccinations. They couldn't come soon enough. As of yesterday, 24,500 and 78 New Yorkers have died from COVID-19. That number includes probable deaths. We have lost so many in our community. This will be a difficult holiday season for their loved ones and our thoughts are with them. I also want to acknowledge as I always do a few of the people that we've lost as a result of 9-11 related illnesses since we last met. We recently lost Lieutenant John Crow, who was a member of the NYPD and passed from 9-11 related illnesses that impacted his recovery from COVID-19. We are sending our deepest condolences to his family during this difficult time. And I also want to acknowledge the death of Maria Sanchez, one of our city's essential grocery workers. She was killed on the job at Food Emporium in Hell's Kitchen in my district by an illegally installed dumbwaiter elevator. This is a tragic reminder of the dangers of unsafe working conditions that many New Yorkers, particularly immigrants and low-income workers that they face every day. Maria Sanchez was just 39 years old. She leaves behind a grieving family, including children, uh, four children from the ages of five years old to 21 years old. Tragedy. I wanna take a moment of silence to remember all the lives we've lost as a result of coronavirus, as well as those from Lieutenant Crow and Maria Sanchez. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge a departure from the council. Uh, Megan Chen, an assistant deputy director in the legislative division will sadly, because Megan is amazing, um, sadly, uh, she is uh, leaving us to go to the dark side. I'm kidding. She's going to the mayor's office of city legislative affairs. We're very happy for her. We're very happy for the mayor's office of city legislative affairs. Uh, Megan started with the council in uh, 2016. Uh, but even prior to that, she was an intern at the council in 2012. She was instrumental uh, in our fight to enact major lead-related legislation 
to pass a strong package to ensure tenant protections. And she was critical in the council's efforts to pass the Climate Mobilization Act. Megan, we will miss you and wish you all the best in your next steps. You have really just been a, a pleasure uh, to work with and I'm very happy for you. Uh, I also wanna mention that we are uh, losing um, two council members uh, today, uh, two of the members of this body. It is uh, their last meeting uh, as council members in the New York City Council. It's crazy that time flies so quickly. Uh, council members uh, Andy Cohen and Richie Torres, both from the great borough of the Bronx are um, moving on to greener pastures. I'm very proud of Richie that he uh, is going to uh, be in Congress uh, very soon, a historic election for him, the first openly gay member of Congress representing New York City, uh, born and raised in public housing, really a child of the Bronx, someone who I am proud to call a friend, someone who I was elected with in 2013 and who has done uh, so much, uh, first as chair of the Public Housing Committee uh, and then now as chair of Oversight and Investigations. Uh, Richie, uh, we're gonna miss you in this body. Uh, you've really made this body a better body and uh, I'm really grateful for your friendship and I'm really proud of you. As I said, we're losing uh, Andy Cohen who is becoming a state Supreme Court a judge. I can't think of anyone who is more fair, more ethical, more compassionate, more thoughtful as it relates to thinking about any issue. And so for the people of the Bronx who are now gonna be able to go before uh, Justice Co uh, Cohen, uh, they are gonna be very lucky to have someone who I know will handle uh, administering justice in the law in a thoughtful, compassionate way that makes a difference in people's lives. Uh, Andy has been a great friend to me. Uh, I'm really uh, gonna miss him. He's done a great job as chair of our Consumer Affairs Committee uh, this past year. Um, and uh, he is just a mensch. Andy Cohen is a mensch. So uh, I'm gonna miss both of them. Uh, they're both uh, two good friends and uh, I'm sad to see them leave. And I didn't get to make the announcement at one of the previous stated meetings because he just got up and abruptly left. But I do again wanna congratulate uh, council member, former council member, uh, Donovan Richards, who uh, left the council a couple of stated meetings ago uh, and is now the Queensborough president. Um, we, we miss him. He was with the council, I believe, for 16 years of his life as a staffer and then as a council member. So he's given a lot of his life to the New York City Council. And uh, in this upcoming year of 2021, uh, there's going to be, I guess, a lot of changes. Uh, people are, uh, are figuring out what to do next in their lives after serving in this body. So we're gonna miss you, Richie. We're gonna miss you, Andy. And we congratulate uh, both of you. As we close out this year, I, I wanna give a special thank you to each member of this body. We have accomplished so much together in a year when so much has changed around us. And I look forward to working alongside all of you next year and fighting to do even more for the city that we all love. I wanna give a special congratulations to council member Francisco Moyes, chief of staff, Megan Tadeo, who recently gave birth to her daughter, Rosalie. I know that Francisco, I believe is uh, now a very happy and proud uh, godfather. So we congratulate Megan and Francisco and uh, their families on this really wonderful, exciting moment. And uh, last but not least, uh, to everyone who is celebrating a Merry Christmas, a happy Kwanzaa, I hope everyone has been, who has been celebrating Hanukkah has uh, really been uh, enjoying this festival of lights in this, in this hard year and a happy new year uh, going into 2021 uh, because this is our last dated meeting of the year. I know this year uh, looked different and so much has changed, but we still have a lot to celebrate. There were so many uplifting stories of New Yorkers helping each other out during this difficult time like when community fridges people set up to make sure uh, no one went hungry, the nightly applauding that was done at seven o'clock for essential workers and frontline workers and healthcare workers, restaurants feeding healthcare workers for free uh, to thank them for all of their service. Uh, we were the epicenter of COVID-19 in the entire world and we showed the world our resiliency 
and proved once again why, and I have the chills saying this because I believe it, why New York City is the greatest city in the world. Now on to today's agenda. Today, the council will be voting on the reappointment of Miguelina Camille, Patricia Ann Taylor, and Tiffany Townsend to the New York City Board of Elections. Out of our finance committee, we'll vote on a budget transparency resolution, expense and revenue budget modifications to make changes to the fiscal 2021 budget, an Article 11 property tax exemption for Scheuer House in Brighton Beach and Council Member Chaim Deutsch's district to preserve 154 units of affordable senior housing, an Article 11 property tax exemption for Ridgewood Bushwick in council member Antonio Reynoso and Dharma Diaz's districts to preserve 83 units of affordable housing. Out of the land use committee, we'll be voting on four land use items, including one resolution. DeKalb Commons, HPD is seeking approvals to facilitate the construction of three new buildings with 84 affordable units in council member Robert Cornegie's district, PS 48, is on uh, the designation list as a historic landmark in council member Adrian Adams's district. Uh, New York City Health and Hospitals Woodhull, Woodhull II, approval of a long-term lease in council member Robert Cornegie's district to facilitate the development of an eight-story residential building with 93 supportive and affordable housing units, 265 Front Street rezoning in council member Steve Levin's district. This application has been withdrawn and 312 Coney Island Avenue rezoning will be voting to modify a series of applications in council member Brad Landers district to facilitate the development of a mixed use building with approximately 278 units, including 70 units of affordable housing, ground floor retail space, and a new church facility. We'll be voting on resolution 1445A sponsored by council member Rafael Salamanca, our land use committee chair. Uh, which is an authorizing resolution submitted by the mayor to the council pursuant to charter section 363 for the granting of a non-exclusive franchise for the installation of cable wire and or optical fiber and associated equipment on and in the inalienable property of the city to be used in providing one or more telecommunication services. The resolution would authorize do it to solicit requests for proposals or other solicitation for a period of five years from the date of adoption by the council. Franchises granted in connection with such RFPs would could be for a period of up to 15 years, including all renewals. Moving on to the remainder of our legislative agenda, we'll be voting on introduction number 2187, sponsored by 37 council members, which would co-name 92 thoroughfares and public places based on requests of council members whose districts include the location. Four of these co-namings are either a relocation of a previously enacted co-naming or a revision to the street sign installed with respect to a previously enacted co-naming. And I wanna thank from the staff, Christopher Sartori and Patrick Mulvihill. We'll be voting uh, to expand whistleblower protections. Introduction number 1770A, sponsored by council member, one of the last times we can say it, council member Richie Torres, will expand whistleblower protections for individuals facing adverse personnel actions. This legislation would do so by one, requiring the Corporation Council to investigate allegations of adverse personnel action against high ranking officials within the Department of Investigation. Two, clarifying that person, persons who report misconduct to the Special Commissioner of Investigation for the New York City School District are eligible for whistleblower protection. Three, requiring that the entity investigating a whistleblower retaliation claim provide periodic status updates to the relevant whistleblower. Four, establishing a private right to action for city employee whistleblowers who suffer adverse personnel actions if their employing agency does not comply with remedial actions recommended by the Department of Investigation. And five, requiring more comprehensive annual reporting about whistleblower retaliation claims from the Department of Investigation. And I wanna thank Ed Atkin, who is the best for his work on uh, this really important bill. We'll be voting on two bills related to housing and buildings. Introduction number 2171A, sponsored by council member Robert Cornegie, extends the deadline by which owners must install carbon monoxide detectors in compliance with local law 191 by six months until July 1st, 2021, 
in order to give property owners additional time to comply with the law. Local law 191 of 2018 requires the installation of carbon monoxide detectors in certain new group M occupancies in certain existing commercial buildings that were not previously required to have carbon monoxide detectors. This bill takes effect immediately and shall be deemed to have been in force in effect on and after July, January 1st, 2021. And I wanna thank from the staff, Jean and Zilka for her work on this important bill. Introduction number 2151B, sponsored by Council Member Cornegie, our Housing and Buildings Chair, and Council Member Danny Drum, our Finance Chair, would extend the deadline for buildings in community districts one, three, and 10 in all boroughs to inspect gas piping systems and where applicable, certify that hazardous conditions have been corrected. The deadline for these requirements, which were established by Local Law 152 of 2016, would be extended from December 31st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021. The deadlines for the remaining community districts are staggered until uh, December, 2023. This bill would also require the New York City Department of Buildings to solicit public comments related to the implementation of Local Law 152, conduct targeted outreach regarding the requirements of the law and submit a report describing the methods of targeted outreach employed by the agency and I wanna thank Austin Branford for his work on this bill. Our next two bills are related to remote learning for students in our city's public schools. This year has been so incredibly hard for our children and for school communities. These bills are designed to provide us with much needed information on how students are faring in school during the pandemic. This is important information and it's been very hard for this council, though Mark Traeger has been a pit bull to obtain the information from the DOE. So I am very proud that we are taking this action. Introduction 2058A, sponsored by public advocate Jumani D. Williams, will require the New York City Department of Education to post student attendance data on its website monthly during the use of remote learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The data would be disaggregated by school, school district, grade, ethnicity, and a number of other factors. Introduction number 2104A, sponsored by our education chair, Mark Traeger, will require the New York City Department of Education to report on a series of metrics whenever it is engaged in remote learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Those metrics would include, number one, language access and support provided for English language learners. Two, steps DOE took to ensure incarcerated students receive remote instruction. And three, details on internet enabled devices ordered by the DOE and distributed to students. Both of these education bills would take effect immediately and we would be deemed repealed two years after becoming law. And I wanna thank Malcolm Butehorn for his work on these bills. Our last two bills are designed to protect workers in our fast food restaurants throughout New York City. These workers are most vulnerable to being fired without a cause related to their work performance and it has to stop. This practice prevents them from speaking out about harassment and poor working conditions. And, we, and as we've seen during COVID-19, they continue to face dangerous conditions on the job. We need them to be able to speak out without fear of being fired. And we as a city need to protect them. And these bills work to do that. Introduction number 1415A, sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander, will prohibit fast food employers from terminating the employment or substantially reducing the hours of a fast food employee in the absence of the fast food employee's demonstrated failure to satisfactorily perform job duties or misconduct, in other words, without just cause. Employees would be required to give, employers would be required to give employees a written reason for termination of their employment. Laid off fast food employees would also be entitled to schedule pay premiums for shifts lost due to termination. And this provides for remedies, including reinstatement, back pay, and civil penalties. Introduction 1396A, sponsored by council member Adrian Adams, will prohibit fast food employers from terminating the employment or substantially reducing the hours of a fast food employee in the absence of a bona fide economic reason. This includes full or partial closing of operations or technological or organizational changes to the business in response 
to the reduction in volume of production sales or profit. Additionally, the employer would be required to discharge employees by inverse seniority. Those hired last would be discharged first. Employees discharged for bona fide economic reasons within the prior year must first be offered available shifts before they are distributed to other employees or new hires. This bill also provides for arbitration of disagreements between fast food employers and fast food employees. Both of these bills would take effect 180 days after they become law. And I wanna thank from uh, my staff, Lewis Cholden Brown for his work on these two bills. And I also wanna mention that uh, Lewis Cholden Brown, one of my uh, longest staffers who is just the best, uh, he found out, I believe yesterday, that he passed the bar. Uh, so congratulations to Lewis. The, the, the New York City uh, bar could not admit anyone better than you. You are the best and I'm so grateful for everything that you've done. So I wanna congratulate you for your hard work. You have, Lewis has been going to law school uh, part-time while being a full-time employee of the New York City Council, I believe for the past uh, four years or five years. And uh, I'm really, really proud of him. So congratulations to Lewis. That is our agenda, uh, Madam Majority Leader. I turn it back to you. Thank you so much and congratulations to Lewis. We are so proud of you. You're an inspiration to all of us about what can be done. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak only on the bills that we are about to vote on right now. So if you wish to speak, please use the raise hand function in Zoom at this time. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Salamanca, Adams, Lander, and Mizell. All right, we will begin with Council Member Salamanca. Time starts now. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo. Uh, today we are voting on a resolution, 1445A, sponsored by myself and Chair Moya, which would authorize the expansion of franchises for telecommunication services. While the resolution is quite technical, what we are voting on is a common sense measure that would benefit New Yorkers greatly with expanded broadband connectivity options. In a city of nearly 8.5 million people and as diverse as ours, there are only three, three providers who provide residential broadband connectivity. As a result of this, New Yorkers are, are at their mercy of these three predetermined providers in our area to carry out these critical services, which significantly stifles consumer access, competition, and not to mention revenue for the city. And at a time when the digital divide in our communities exacerbated by COVID-19 has never been clear, we must challenge the business as usual approach to our franchise agreements. By authorizing Do It to expand par par parameters of the broadband franchise agreement to companies not part of the cable franchise agreements, we are laying the groundwork for a fairer, more affordable and more transparent era of tele telecommunications in New York City. With our actions today, New Yorkers who have long been frustrated by the strange hold of the major cable providers, myself included, we will have the option to secure the best available product at the best available price. Today's vote is the clearest sign to providers that we are breaking their long established monopolies. I wanna thank, I wanna thank you for allowing me to speak today and I urge my colleagues to vote yes on this important resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Councilmember Salamanca and I love the tree. I will now call on at this time, Councilmember Adams. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. After more than a year of fast food workers fighting to pass intros 1415 and 1396 today, we will vote on these measures which would prohibit fast food employers with 30 or more stores from terminating or cutting workers' hours without just cause. Additionally, they would require fast food employers who, due to legitimate economic reasons, need to lay off employees who do so in order of seniority. Before the pandemic, fast food workers performed dangerous and physically demanding work, but now as essential workers, their jobs have become more dangerous 
putting their health and family's health at risk. In exchange, they are often faced with impossible choices, endure hostile working conditions, leave or be fired and face financial struggle without a job. Just Cause legislation is about giving working families economic stability and security. And most importantly, this is about treating workers with respect and dignity. I thank my colleague, Councilmember Lander, and we thank all of the advocates for their solidarity. Today, we will also vote on a preconsidered bill that will co-name three thoroughfares in my district in Queens District 28. I would like to publicly thank Ashik Ram Saran, Kevin Livingston, and all of the members of the Great 28 that sought to honor people and culture of our community with Pandit Ramla Way, Henry Clayton Street, and Little Guyana Avenue. Lastly, PS48 in my district in Jamaica will become a city landmark. This effort has been ongoing for over a decade. Thank you to Jeff Gottlieb, the historian of Queens, the scholars and community are so proud of this landmark designation and I'd ask all my colleagues to support these bills. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Congratulations. We will now hear from Council Member Lander followed by Council Member Maisel. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And it's so good to follow uh, my partner on these bills, uh, Councilmember Adrienne Adams, who has been a real champion for these workers. As she said, fast food workers have been on the front lines of this pandemic, serving their neighbors, working in tight quarters, taking on new responsibilities for sanitizing, and yet in many cases, uh, fearful to speak up about health and safety issues out of fear of losing their jobs, I'm so proud the city council is giving these essential but long disrespected workers some job stability today. We should all be able to agree that no one should be fired on a whim, but for years in the fast food industry, that's been the norm. A survey found that more than 65% of fast food workers, most of whom are women of color, have had hours reduced or been let go without receiving any notice or reason. Intros 1415 and 1396 will end that by requiring that they receive just cause uh, and notice before there could be any loss of hours of termination. A couple of quick points I just want to clarify. This only covers fast food restaurants, not other neighborhood small businesses. It doesn't go into effect for six months and we'll be in a different place six months from now. Companies can still fire employees for misconduct or failure to perform work duties. They just have to get notice and have clear policies and the opportunity just like any employee expects. Um, and there can still be layoffs for economic reasons. They just need to be in order of seniority. Um, I guess it's not a surprise that industry lobbyists are pushing back, but it's worth noting um, that the eight largest publicly owned fast food companies have increased their value by $42.4 billion since December 2019. They can afford to treat their workers with some dignity. Um, I'll say some thank my thank yous uh, when I vote, um, but I think the most important ones here really belong to the workers. They have been organizing through the Fight 15 for a fair work week for this bill. When we were cheering on our stoops all spring, it was in part them we're cheering for. And today we're backing that up with dignity, fairness, and job stability. Time expired. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. At this time, we'll call in Council Member Maisel. Time uh, starts now. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first, let me congratulate my colleagues who are going on to uh, greener pastures. Uh, it was a pleasure serving with you. I'm happy to have this opportunity to um, extol the virtues of my uh, uh, previous, uh, uh, the councilman of my, pre of my district, the 46th council district, Lou Fiddler. We are honoring him today by co-naming a street in Sheepshead Bay. Um, Lou Fiddler was more than a councilman. He was my friend for uh, over 40 years. He set the example of how a, a, a elected official can serve a community selflessly with honor and dignity. Uh, Lou was taken from us in a very untimely way. Um, it is very, very appropriate and meaningful that we will now forever enshrine Lou's name on Lou Fiddler Way in Cheapside Bay. So I'm, I'm just very proud and very honored to be able to introduce this legislation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Maisel, and congratulations to you in memory of Lou Fiddler. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Gibson and Kalos. Council member Gibson, you may begin. Time starts now. 
Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, Speaker, and all of my colleagues. Happy holidays and seasons. Greetings to all of you. I want to quickly speak on behalf of my community with respect to several street co-namings that are on today's agenda. Reverend Wendell T. Foster Way, in recognition of being the first African-American from the Bronx to hold political office with his successful election to this body in 1978, he was served for 24 years, was a longtime pastor for 40 years of the Christ Church in the Bronx. I'm honored to carry on his legacy in the city council, following in his footsteps of compassion and leadership. Bishop Caesar Gooding rode uh, in recognition of his service in the U.S. Army. He later on in 1969 joined his wife to create the Miracle Revival Church in Harlem, which later relocated to McCombs Road in my district in the Bronx. He was a spiritual leader and advisor and role model to so many in the Bronx and beyond. Naima Bilal Way, in recognition of a tireless advocate and community leader and personal friend of mine, DC 37 member. She served for 22 years at the state's HCR. She was involved in local community board four, the 44th precinct council, my tenant block and neighborhood council and Casa Bronx. She was an advocate for safe and affordable housing and was also the president of her tenants association. Uh, Brandon Ellison Hendricks Boulevard is named in recognition of a 17 year old basketball star who was on the path to a full college scholarship. He recently graduated from the Metropolitan Soundview High School in the Bronx. Brandon was called B. Diddy. He was a star athlete on his basketball team, and he was known and loved by his family, his friends, his coaches, his community in the Bronx and beyond. And unfortunately, on June 29th, he was at a barbecue with his friend, and he was fatally shot. Uh, and I am so honored to know his mom, Eve Hendricks, and to work with her family in recognizing the block that he grew up on in honor of Brandon B. Diddy uh, and Ellison Hendricks. And I ask all of my colleagues to vote yes on today's item agenda related to street co-namings. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Gibson. And I know how much these street co-namings mean to our community and I applaud you. We will now uh, turn it over to Councilmember Kalos. Time starts now. I'm uh, here to speak on resolution 1445. This pandemic has had such a disproportionate effect on low income communities of color. Uh, all of us have the privilege to be uh, remote and uh, zoom into our uh, jobs and to this stated session, but for one in five households in New York City, that's just not the case. Uh, as we grant these franchise agreements, we have an opportunity to bring equity uh, and to do more. And I do wanna thank uh, the land use chair and, and zoning chair Sal Salamanca and Moya. Uh, the version of the legislation that we are now passing, the A version includes protections for labor to pay people what they should, at least with transparency, so we can at least enforce that. It also includes a, a new and novel provision to provide uh, low cost, affordable, high speed broadband internet access in residential and commercial areas. And uh, last but not least, it does provide mandates for net neutrality, which were previously missing. Uh, the only thing I can say is that I am beginning to lose confidence in the ability of the private sector to deliver on the promise of universal broadband, given how much of a discriminatory impact we've seen and how the services have been provided. I think we're losing an opportunity for uh, having municipal broadband and guaranteeing internet for all. Uh, that being said, I really appreciate that they were able to include and add the affordable internet and uh, the net neutrality. So I'll be voting in favor, but I really hope we as a body can fight for and win municipal broadband. Thank you so much, Council Member Kalos, and thank you for your advocacy. I'd like to ask the parliamentarian, are there any additional members that wish to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Barron, Bolden, and Menchaca. Council Member Barron, you may begin. Time starts now. Uh, thank you very much. I just want to add my congratulations also to the street co-naming on behalf of Wendell Foster, who was a great person, very bold, and very much an outspoken activist in his community and also recognize that my former counsel to higher ed, Paul Senegal, is no longer with us. He has left, he's gone into the private sector 
and has a very, uh, very important position with the botanical gardens, I believe in the Bronx, we wish him well. In terms of co-namings, I also want to acknowledge that there is a co-naming for Akai Gurley in this package. Akai Gurley was a resident of the Pink Houses located in my community. He's 28 years old. And in 2014, he entered a stairway of Pink Houses and was shot by police officer Peter Liang. Akai Gurley was unarmed. He was not committing any crime. He was not engaged in any negative behavior. Police officer Liang violated policy by having his gun out, by having his finger on the trigger, and by pulling that trigger, killing Akai Gurley. We also want to make sure that we recognize that um, this was, in many people's opinion, a great miscarriage of justice, because even though he was indicted and convicted and found guilty, he was only sentenced to 500 hours of community service, home detention under the, uh, under the recommendation of district attorney, Ken Thompson. Many people were outraged and felt it was a great discourage, uh, dis miscarriage of justice. And similar to Timothy Stansbury Jr. who was shot in 2004 by an I'm officer in the, hairway, in the stairway of a NYCHA building. So we want to acknowledge uh, the loss that we've suffered and send our condolences to his family still and to all of my colleagues who are leaving. We wish you well and much success in your new endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Barron, and thank you for keeping the memory and the history of those that we have been tragically removed from our communities. Thank you. Thank you. We will now call on Council Member Holden, followed by Council Member Menchaca. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, regarding the street co-naming uh, bill we're voting on today, I just want to say what a pleasure it is to honor my friend and mentor, Thomas V. Ogdebeni, with uh, street co-naming. I know I'm joined with the, uh, in this honor with my good friend, Councilman Eric Ulrich. Um, he'll probably say something later too. Tom was uh, elected to the New York City Council in November of 91. Uh, the election um, of the newly created council, the 30th council district, and then reelected in 93 and 97, serving full 10 years allowed by term limits. In 95, uh, Tom Ogdemeni was appointed by Speaker Peter Vallone to the council's leadership team and budget negotiating committee. And on the 23rd of November, 1994, he was elected as the minority leader of the council. And as minority leader, Tom was well known and respected uh, for his passionate defense of his communities uh, and their principles of the middle class. Uh, Tom died, unfortunately, on October 12th, 2015, at the age of 71, after a, a battle with cancer, and we miss him dearly. I also want to recognize another important street co-naming. Um, for over 190 years, Nears Tavern in Woodhaven has been the longest standing bar in all five boroughs and again, a huge part of the Woodhaven community I represent. And it was founded in 1829, and Nears Tavern was originally called the Blue Pump Room and sat across the street from the Union Course racetrack. Uh, the matches in that racetrack were between horses from the South against those of the North, and it actually drew crowds uh, in the Union Course track of about 70,000. So I want to thank uh, Lois and Gordon, the owner of Nears for keeping it alive and the Queens Chamber of Commerce, Tom Gresh and, the, and all the elected officials, including the mayor, uh, for helping save Nears this year. Uh, thank you, Major, uh, Madam Majority Leader and happy holidays uh -huh. to everyone. Thank you so much. We'll now hear from Council Member Menchaca. Time starts now. Hello colleagues. Uh, I wanna speak on one thing we're gonna be voting on uh, that hasn't gotten a lot of attention, but I wanna bring attention to it. Today, the Finance Committee is presenting modifications in response to the November plan. I brought this up in Democratic Conference earlier this week um, because I was surprised. I was surprised that we hadn't gone through and taken the opportunity that we have every year in the middle of the year to examine where we are in the budget. We just passed a budget. I know that it was contentious, but it was a budget that we passed in the City Council. And it gives us the opportunity to make changes. There might be surplus or deficit 
that we need to deal with. And the city council has to approve those changes and recommendations from the mayor. Well, this council made a commitment to our communities that we were gonna be extra careful, that we were gonna bring more sunlight and transparency. Uh, this council made that commitment. And the truth is that we need more transparency, especially as we're going into some really tough budget negotiations. And we didn't review it. I didn't review it uh, in the BNT uh, because colleagues, we have an apparatus here, the budget negotiation team that hasn't met yet um, and hasn't reviewed what I think is an incredibly critical moment as we look at the budget so that we can understand what's on its way. Uh, and so I'm gonna be voting no, and I'm hoping that you can also vote no on these modifications until we do the due diligence. Uh, I know this is a little bit of a, of a uh, a weird moment for us right now, but um, I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, we have a process and I wanna make sure that we use that process uh, that is so important to us because our public and our constituents are looking to us to understand it. There are advocates that are waiting for this moment to be able to give us ways to rethink how we can use this budget modification process to benefit the people that we're saying we're gonna benefit, our working families, people- Time expired. Continue. That's all I have my time. Oh, that's all the time I have right now. Uh, I'm hoping you all vote no on the budget modifications today. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Menchaca. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any additional members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Council Members Cornegie and Reynoso. Council Member Cornegie, you may begin. Time starts now. Uh, so I'm, I'm in a little bit of a position. So I, I, I'll save my comments for a general discussion. Fair. Okay, then we will move right on to Council Member Reynoso. Time starts now. Hi, colleagues. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. I wanted to um, take the time to echo the sentiments of uh, Council Member Carlos Menchaca. Uh, I've tried to look through many documents to find out exactly what's going to be happening in this budget modification outside of the traditional changes to the Schedule C, uh, which will move money from organization to organization um, in our local council districts, uh, depending on whether or not they were able to spend it or had any issues on it. But there's a second portion of the budget modification that I just can't seem to, to square um, and want to be very careful uh, to not uh, approve anything or attach my name to anything that would in any way transfer city funds between various agencies in fiscal year 2021 um, or implement changes to the city's expense budget that might be related to the NYPD. Um, and because I don't have enough information uh, on whether or not that will be happening, and I made a commitment when I voted on the budget uh, this year that I would be vigilant uh, to ensure that um, the cuts that we said were going to be made are actually going to be made. Um, I can't say for certain either way because I just don't have the information. I've been looking through documents um, for quite some time. I can't find exactly how the transfer of funds will be happening. So I want to encourage my colleagues uh, to be vigilant and be thoughtful. We said we we're going to cut a billion and some people think we did that. Other folks don't. But the people that think we did that attributed a lot of that money to overtime. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if that's what's going to happen here, uh, but I'm not sure either way. I just don't have the information. And we've never had, we didn't have a BNT, which I think would have been the appropriate entity to address these issues. Um, and because of that, I'm going to be very cautious about uh, voting um, on this, on this, uh, on the, on the pre-considered motion to transfer funds. Um, well, I'll be voting no. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Reynoso. Uh, we recognize that it wasn't discussed in the BNT, but the Brooklyn delegation and the Dem conference are also other areas where we could discuss these matters. Um, in full. At this time, Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak? Yes, the last speaker is Council Member Rosenthal. Council Member Rosenthal, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to jump in in response to Council Members Menchaca and Reynoso uh, about the November plan. Just, uh, you know, this is nothing we've ever had a BNT about. And um, the November modification was brought to the finance committee where um, council member drum could remind us, uh, but there were 
a few questions there. Um, and I feel that, you know, we were given just as much notice as we've ever been given about the materials in the November modification. Um, our finance director sent us uh, the work that her staff does every year in digesting what's in the plan um, and sent that over. Um, you know, the next real time that we'll, we'll start to have input is um, probably March or April, as we usually do after the executive budget comes out and after, um, you know, our finance staff has time to digest what's in there. And then, of course, we have all our hearings in March. Um, to ask those really important questions so we can have a good handle on the information in for our vote in uh, the adapted budget. So um, I'm voting yes on this um, with no with no concerns or uh, thought that something might be slipped in there that's untoward. Thank you very much, Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Rosenthal. And I just want to remind members, part of the reason that we do DEM Conference now by uh, borough is so that we can dive deeper into many issues that are going to be voted on um, at the stated meeting. So I strongly encourage everyone to attend um, and to voice many of your concerns or questions um, at that particular time. Just to be sure and thorough, Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. Okay, we'll now move into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor intros 1396 and 1415A, fast food employees. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education intros 2058A and 2104A, remote learning. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered M's 269 and 270 and accompanying resolutions, budget modifications. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered Reso 1509, transparency resolution. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LUs 709 and 710 and accompanying resolutions, tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, intros 2151B and 2171A, gas piping systems and carbon monoxide detectors. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, Resolution 1445A, Telecommunications Franchises. Amended and coupled on general orders. LU 693 and Reso 1517, DeKalb Commons. Coupled on general orders. LU 703 and Reso 1518, Landmark Designation. Coupled on general orders. LU 704 and Reso 1519, Health and Hospitals, Woodhull II. Coupled on general orders. LU 705 and 706, 60th Street rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 707 and 708 and accompanying resolutions 265, Front Street rezoning. Coupled to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. Report of the Committee on Oversight and Investigations, Intro 1770A, Whistleblower Protections. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, pre-considered intro 2187, naming of 92 thoroughfares and public places. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections, M264 and Reso 1522, approving the reappointment of Miguelina Camilo, Bronx County Commissioner of Elections. Coupled on general orders. M265 and Reso 1523, approving the reappointment of Pat Patricia Ann Taylor, Richmond County Commissioner of Elections. Coupled on general orders. M266 and Reso 1524, approving the reappointment of Tiffany Townsend, New York County Commissioner of Elections. Coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar now, LU 696, 697, and 698, and accompanying resolutions 312 Coney Island Avenue rezoning. Coupled on general orders, and I'm asking the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general order calendar. Adam. Wishing the very best to Council Members Torres and Cohen on their future endeavors. You will be missed. And congratulations to all of my colleagues on passing legislation today. Happy holidays to all. I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Ambry Samuel. 
Wishing everyone a healthy and safe holiday season. And I look forward to working with you in the new year. With that, I vote aye on all. Ayala. I vote aye. Baron. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. I just want to commend uh, Councilmember Carnegie for the project that he's bringing into his district. Great work. It meets the needs and the income bands of the people who live in his district. And uh, I echo the comments of my colleagues, uh, Menchaca and Minosa, who talk about the, um, uh, the questionability of what is in, in fact in that budget mod. So I'm voting no on that. And I'm voting no on 705 and 706. And I'm not quite sure if land use 694 and 695 are in this package. If they are, I'm voting no on those as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Thank you, Councilmember Borelli. Thank you. I, I vote aye on all except intros 1396 and 1415. Uh, and, and wish the very best luck to uh, my colleague, Councilmember Cohen, uh, and to my colleague, uh, Councilmember, Congressman-elect, excuse me, uh, Torres. Uh, both of you guys, uh, it was a pleasure serving with you, uh, and I wish you luck serving the people of New York City in the future. Thank you. Brennan. Oh, I at all. Thank you. Cabrera. I vote aye on all, and I want to give a special thanks uh, to Councilmember Richie Torres and Andy Cohen. You two are amazing. Thank you for your insight, your knowledge, uh, for uh, your advice, and above all, your friendship. Cohen. Uh, thank you. I have some comments, but I'll make them on the general discussion calendar. And with that, I'll vote aye on all. Constantinidis. I'm going to vote aye on all and congratulate both of my colleagues, uh, Andrew, Andy Cohen and Richie Torres. I wish you guys all the success in the world in your new roles. And uh, the council is definitely going to be diminished by not having you guys here with us. So happy holidays, everyone. And again, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cornegie. I vote aye. Deutsch. Uh, no on 1396, no on 1415. I abstain on intro to 2187 and I in the rest. Thank you. Councilmember Dharma Diaz. I vote aye and happy holidays to all. Thank you. Ruben Diaz. Drum. Councilmember Drum. Okay, we'll come back. Council member Eugene. I vote aye. Thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon again, colleagues. Um, I'm voting aye on all of today's item agendas, and I want to wish each and every one of you a season's greetings and a very happy holiday season. Um, I echo the sentiments expressed by our speaker in just recognizing all of those New Yorkers that we've lost to COVID-19. Uh, and as we see a vaccine here, we are reminded that communities of color, immigrant communities have been the hardest hit 
by this COVID-19. Uh, we've all been personally touched and impacted by COVID. And I really wanna thank each and every one of you, my colleagues and friends, for all of the work that we've done collectively on the ground, feeding families, providing just the security and encouraging so many New Yorkers during the greatest time of challenge that leaders will step up as we all have done. And so I salute all of you. This has been a hard year, a very painful year, but I am reminded of the beauty of life and every day we wake up with the commitment to serve our constituents and families. And certainly I look forward to better times ahead in the new year. I wanna join with all of our colleagues in congratulating our outgoing colleagues, my Bronx friends, Council Member Richie Torres, as you were sent to Congress. I am so proud of you and I wish God's blessings upon you and your team. And Council Member Andy Cohen, I am extremely proud of you. And I know that you will be a phenomenal Supreme Court judge. So congratulations, my Bronx colleagues. We wish you well and happy holidays to each and every one of you. May God bless you all and keep you. And I look forward to 2021 and all of the blessings that the new year will bring. I vote aye on all. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Gibson. Council Member Drum. Yes, I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Nye. Permission to explain my vote, Majority Leader? Permission granted, Councilmember John I. Time Thank starts you. now. Thank you. As chair of small business, now is not the time to pass any legislation that will put any additional burdens on any small business. It's been reported and is anticipated that about 30% of all small businesses will not survive this crisis. An estimated 75% of the independent restaurants that have been closed to protect New Yorkers from the coronavirus will not make it. In addition, I point out this very day that this body's passing these bills, we learned that the leaders in Washington are going to pass a COVID-19 relief package that specifically excludes the Restaurant Survival Act. So if you are a New York City restaurant owner waiting for the much anticipated and needed relief, from new leaders in Washington, don't hold your breath. With that, I vote aye on all except 1415 and 1396. Uh, my wishes to uh, Council Member Cohen and Torres, congratulations. I wish you all the blessings of the holiday season, a healthy, safe, peaceful, and productive new year. Thank you. Gordenchik. A permission to explain my vote, Madam Majority Leader. Permission granted. Time Thank starts you. now. Um, first, I wanna start off by thanking uh, all those New York City workers who have kept us safe during the snowstorm, especially uh, those who work for the Department of Sanitation and DOT, but uh, everybody really. Um, I just wanted to mention, this has been a very tough year. Some of my colleagues have already stated and on this past Sunday, uh, a true giant in the history of Queens, uh, Rabbi Fabian Schoenfeld, who uh, lived in um, the district of uh, our former colleague, uh, Rory Lantzman, passed it uh, one day before his 97th birthday. He was a Holocaust survivor. Uh, he came to America and uh, built uh, what has become a very large Jewish community in Kew Garden Hills. He was a co-founder of the Vod of Queens, but more importantly than that, he was an advisor um, to people throughout uh, New York City and really even presidents uh, relied upon his wisdom and his knowledge and he will be sorely missed. May his memory be for a blessing. I also want to um, wish uh, my colleagues Andy Cohn and Richie Torres the very best. I know that Andy will be pursuing uh, justice and uh, dispensing it uh, in Bronx County. Uh, Richie represented uh, the land of the Gredenchiks, uh, my father's uh, hometown up there in the Belmont section. And that's very special to me. I know you're gonna be a phenomenal uh, advocate for your community and for all of us really. Um, I think that covers my remarks. I just wanna wish everybody a happy and healthy holiday season. Please stay safe. Um, so many of us in this council alone have lost loved ones uh, to this terrible disease. This is, we're almost there. This week, uh, the first vaccine perhaps in the nation was dispensed in my district at Long Island Jewish Medical Center, part of the Northwell system. 
And uh, I'm so proud of that. And I'm proud of all the, all the frontline workers for everything they've done. With that, uh, Madam Majority Leader, I vote aye on all and uh, a happy and a healthy and um, a prosperous new year to us all. Merry Christmas too and happy Kwanzaa as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hold it. I vote aye on all and wishing Godspeed to my colleagues, Torres and Cohen. Thank you. Cool. I will aye on all and I also want to wish uh, my colleagues a happy and healthy and holidays and a prosperous new year. And also congratulations to Council Member Cohen and Council Member, De uh, Council Member uh, Torres for their um, new endeavors in Congress and in the Supreme Court. Thank you and I want to uh, say thank you to them uh, for serving uh, in City Council for many years with us. Thank you. Thank you. May I explain my vote, please? Permission granted. Time starts now. I also want to congratulate Richie Torres and um, Andy Cohn. We're going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. Um, but I know you will make us proud. I also want to recognize the street co-namings of uh, Wendell Foster, who I was uh, happy to serve with in the council. And to, of course, uh, Lou Fidler, whose wife now lives in my district. And also to Tom Agnabeni, who I served in the council with in the 90s. And I'm happy to say he was a friend. We used to laugh a lot. And he's sorely missed. And I just want to wish everybody a very, very happy holidays. And please, please, please be safe. And I vote aye. Thank you. <laughs> Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you very much. First, I want to say a few thank yous on the Fast Food Just Cause bill, starting with the speaker and Chair Miller. I really appreciate your leadership in bringing these protections to fast food workers, your ability to empathize with people who are suffering and helping the council act to do something about it is really pushing us forward. Uh, big thanks to the staff, Lewis Trolden Brown, big champion here, congrats on the bar, uh, Annie Levers and my policy, uh, policy director, Steph Sokowski, to the team at the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection, especially Commissioner Lorelei Salas and Deputy Commissioner Ben Holt, Paul Sahn at NELP, Rachel Deutsch and the team at CPD. Um, as I said in my earlier remarks, this victory belongs to the workers um, who have been incredible over the last decade in winning paid sick leave, the fight for 15, a fair work week and now just cause. None of that would have been possible without the rock solid support of SEIU 32BJ. Big thank yous to Kyle Bragg, Candace Tolliver, David Cohen, Hannah Birnbaum, Autumn Weintraub, uh, and formerly Mia McDonald. Um, some amazing organizing and support. I also wanna say a big thank you to Rosa Kelly and Amy Levitan from, from the Land Use Division for their help to me with 312 Coney Island Avenue, uh, in addition to Megan Flynn on my staff. Um, uh, we're naming streets in my district today for Mary Sansone, a gutsy Brooklyn social worker who defied the mafia and lived to 101, former New York State Assembly member Joe Ferris, NYPD officer Jose Perez, who was killed in the line of duty in 1994, incomparable Brooklynite Pete Hamill. Um, and finally, uh, I want to say farewell to Andy Cohen, who I've really learned a lot from. And there's no way to express my friendship and admiration for Richie Torres in, in my time here. So I will have to try to do it elsewhere. I'm sorry that we cannot buy both of you a drink today. Um, I vote no on M269, uh, the expense budget modification, and I on the rest. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Lander. And I just wanna remind um, many of my colleagues here today that in November, we had actually a budget modification hearing um, in the Finance Committee. So I just wanna make everyone aware of that as well. So I'll move on to the next person. Levin. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I'm starting now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, I'm going to be voting aye on all. 
um, and I want to um, uh, acknowledge um, among all of the street co namings, um, uh, my colleague Karen Koswitz mentioned um, street co naming for uh, former council member Lou Fiddler. Uh, Lou served um, uh, uh, four, four years, uh, 12 years in this council and four years uh, with, with me. Um, and he was a, a real mentor uh, to me and I think a lot of other council members. He was a very kind-hearted, um, hardworking, incredibly um, smart and dedicated um, public servant. And um, my, my best wishes go to Robin and his sons and um, you know, one thing, just as a as a, a matter of um, legacy, um, Lou was so dedicated to um, uh, runaway and homeless youth in New York City um, uh, more than really anybody that I can uh, think of, and so uh, it's a really fitting legacy of the work that he did. Um, and I want to just uh, thank and acknowledge my friends um, Richie Torres and Andy Cohen. Um, I can't say that I'm surprised that Richie Torres is going to Congress. I kind of always thought that he would go to Congress. Um, and I'm just, uh, my heart fills um, with gladness uh, for you, Richie, um, because I know um, both, both Richie and Andy are, and I think that everyone should know this, everyone in the public, two incredibly honest and decent people who have always done things for the right reason and what's in their heart and they follow their conscience um, and are, are people that we can look to um, to know that uh, those in our government responsible for making important decisions um, come at it uh, with the best of intentions and um, a compassionate heart and I wish you both Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Councilman Levin, your vote, please. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Request to explain my vote. Your mission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. I want to start by congratulating Councilmember Lander for his leadership in sponsoring intro 1415. Fast food workers labored under notoriously difficult conditions prior to the pandemic and have been out there working throughout the past 10 months too often with inadequate health protections. And the least they deserve is to know they won't be fired without just cause. Secondly, today we're voting to codename a street in my district, the corner of 143rd Street and Convent Avenue for a leader who I know many of you knew and admired, Cecil Corbin Mark, really a giant in the environmental justice movement in West Harlem, citywide and nationally, and someone who I was honored to call a friend. He was of course suddenly taken from us in October. And the corner that we're co-naming has been home to his family for generations. And so I'm thrilled that it will forever be known as Cecil Corbin Mark Way. And finally, Andy and Richie, two colleagues whose friendship has meant the world to me over the past seven years, uh, whose wisdom I have constantly relied on. I will miss you both dearly and this body will be diminished by your departure. But I know that a future of Limitless possibilities awaits you both. And I wish you all the best. With that, I will be voting aye on all and wishing everyone a happy and safe holiday. Thank you. Lewis. I vote aye on all. And I just wanna quickly congratulate both my colleagues, council members uh, Cohen and Torres on your new endeavors. And also wanna acknowledge two very, very good mentors of mine that passed away, uh, Dr. Roy Hastick and Lou Fiddler on the co-namings for both of them. Happy to see that happening. Happy holidays to all. Thank you. Maizel. Uh, yes. Menchaka. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, happy holidays. Uh, Feliz Navidad to um, everyone. And I hope that we come back in 2021 with some renewed energy and commitment to each other here in this body. 
Uh, I want to say thank you to the incredible Richie Torres and Andy Cohen for your service here in the council. It is uh, one of the best jobs to have, and I hope you miss us uh, in your new endeavors. Um, I wanted to also just address some of the back and forth around this budget modification and just double down on this concept of transparency. And I know that uh, the majority leader is reminding us that there was a conversation that's happened in the finance committee, but I wanna honor what has been very kind of clear to the communities that we represent that the budget negotiation team is where we do a lot of this work and where we can actually kind of bring recommendations uh, and debate them. Uh, without debate, we can um, really bring, uh, it brings concern. It brings a lot of concern for me. And I think that right now we cannot, we cannot forget what happened last summer. There was a lot of consternation and the communities erupted. Uh, and I don't want that to happen. And so this is a telltale sign for us that I hope we can correct uh, and bring a different style of conversation. And yes, I know that the borough delegations are places that we connect, but that doesn't give us all the opportunity to talk to each other. And so I hope we can actually correct that and move out of borough delegations because that's not functioning in the way that I think we can uh, and, and deserve. Um, and so I will be voting no on the budget modifications, the finance budget modifications. I will also be voting no on land use items 696, 697, 698. Uh, and this is a, a project in Brooklyn in Councilmember Lander's district. Uh, Community Board 7 voted no on this project, citing uh, incredible scale issues and that this could have been part of a comprehensive planning process uh, that would have been, I think, uh, a better a better process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Kilos. Thank you. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I want to thank millions of New Yorkers who turned out to vote, waited hours in the rain to cast their vote. You are heroes of democracy, but the truth is there's no reason that voting needs to be so hard. No reason it should be hard to register, so hard to vote. Albany and a board of elections broken by patronage are the biggest impediment to free and fair elections in New York City. Despite calls to blow up New York City board of elections from the governor and mayor de Blasio Real still stuck with the same broken system. As a council member with a vote on the appointment of commissioners to the board of elections, I will use my power to demand and that anyone I vote for do the right thing. I've taken the time to meet with all three democratic commissioners for New York, Staten Island and the Bronx. And they've all agreed to the following. Uh, with Albany passing a law to block online voter registration here in New York City, all three agreed to let people register online once it's repealed by Albany or executive order. Two, taking on patronages and nepotism by posting jobs for the public to apply. Three, taking on long lines by splitting up mega poll sites, adding poll sites for early voting and on election day, just to name a few. I want to thank Council Member Menchaca and Reynoso for their appeal during today's meeting. It moved me. The November budget modification added nearly $4 billion, still leaving nonprofits who are on the front line serving youth, seniors, disabled, homeless, and all those in need out in the cold with millions in retroactive and prospective cuts. The November budget modification still fails to invest in our low-income communities of color and still fails to fundamentally change policing in order to advance criminal, economic, and racial justice. I vote aye on all with the exception of the budget modification. Thank you. Miller. Good afternoon. Mission to explain my vote, please. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I, first of all, I want to wish everyone safe and help, healthy holidays, upcoming holidays. And uh, once again, those who celebrated Hanukkah, uh, may the light to continue to shine. Uh, it's been a tough 2020, but looking forward to working e with each and every one of you to make New York City a better city. Uh, I want to say that it's been an honor and privilege to work with uh, uh, Council Members uh, Cohen, uh, soon to be Judge Cohen and Congress member elect, uh, my, my little brother and primo, uh, Richie Torres, so proud of, of both of you and, and know that you're going to represent the people well in, in your future endeavors. And, and I am, as we all are, 
here to uh, work with you in those endeavors as well. I want to echo uh, the sentiments of my colleagues in honoring the contributions of so many New Yorkers with the street co names and just like to add the name of Professor David Bluford, uh, a great public servant and educator from uh, uh, from my district and uh, who uh, worked throughout the city of New York. Um, I will be voting no on 1445A, uh, the franchising agreement. This is something that uh, we have dealt with for the probably the last five years here uh, to some degree in here in the council. This is an industry that regardless of the company, uh, they have put profits over people. Uh, this is an industry that for five consecutive years, a company within this industry, major company represented by major bargaining units have been on strike because those workers have not been uh, treated with the dignity and respect that they deserve. Uh, I think that this council has done little to rectify that. And so I will be voting no on 1445 and I on the rest. Thank you and everyone have a great, prosperous, safe and healthy new year. Thank you, you Governor. Moya. Aye on all. Perkins. Aye on all. Powers. Permission to explain my vote, Ms. Majority Leader. Permission granted. Time starts Thank now. You. Thank you. I'm voting aye on all, um, but I wanted to use my time just to say congratulations, but also how much I will miss my friends, Councilmember Cohen and Councilmember Torres, two people that have become very dear personal friends of mine, in addition to being colleagues and people I really enjoy uh, the time we spend together. And even though this year has kept us all apart from each other, I was looking forward and I am looking forward to getting all back together at City Hall sometime in the future, but I know I will miss having the opportunity to catch up and chat with them uh, about all things. So. Um, with that, I, I say uh, congratulations to them. I'm, uh, I'm excited for your next steps, but of course, deeply saddened to be losing two great friends, um, but, uh, but on to better pastures for them both. Um, I want to thank everybody for their work on these bills today and wish everybody a happy holidays and a safe and healthy new year as well. So thank you, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Reynoso. You're muted, Councilman. Uh, per permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Just wanted to uh, uh, say how much I'm going to miss uh, Andy Cohen and Richie Torres, uh, two people that have been extremely uh, influential in my time here in the city council, my neighbor Andy Cohen uh, in uh, the city hall chambers, and how many conversations we've had about so many things. Um, and my brother, Richie Torres, I can't, can't say enough about my relationship with you and how much you've influenced the work that I've done as well. I'm gonna miss you. Um, Ark is gonna miss you. Uh, and, uh, but I know it's for the better. You both deserve uh, where you're going and what you're doing. Andy, you're gonna be a great judge. Uh, Richie, I can't wait to see your work uh, in Congress. So extremely grateful for your time here um, and your friendship. Um, I wanna vote aye on all with the exception of uh, pre-considered intro M269 of the budget modification. Thank you. Where Thank I vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rivera. I want to vote aye on all and say uh, congratulations to Council Members Cohen and Torres. I really do wish you all the best. And that I hope that all the energy that we have today can be put forward productively into our 2021 budget negotiations. Thank you. Thank you. Like the tray. Rodriguez. Congratulations to Councilmember Torres and also Councilmember Cohen. I know that you two will do a great job in both places at the Supreme State Supreme Court in, in DC. It, I'm voting on in all the items. Thank you. Rose. I vote aye on all, and I want to wish uh, happy holidays to all of my colleagues and to council members Torres and Cohen. 
Um, congratulations and Godspeed as you begin the next chapters of your professional journey. Your passion and compassion and integrity really has served your constituents well. And I know that the residents of New York City will continue to benefit from your efforts. We're really going to miss you. Um, this body is, is not going to be the same without you. Uh, Richie, you and I started out, I think, the same time, and uh, it's been, it's really been great. So I wish you both good luck, and um, everybody have a good holiday. Thank you. Rosenthal. With permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you I'm so much. Now. Thank you. Uh, my vote is aye on all. Um, and... I know how boring this is, but my passion for understanding the city's budget grew out of my seven years of dedicated public service in the city's Office of Management and Budget. As most of you know, I served under Koch Dinkins and Giuliani. I love the weeds and I know how much power one can have by understanding the weeds and uh, understanding how to shape the city's budget for the good of public service. Um, and that, at a, as and now as a council member uh, with many responsibilities, um, I have to say, understanding the weeds is what we count on the city council finance staff for. And over the past seven years, our finance director, Latanya McKinney, and the staff that she has um, grown and nourished, um, they have moved mountains to increase transparency in the city's budget. We are so much farther along than any of the time that I worked at OMB. Um, and so to the finance director and her team, she deserves congratulations and respect for doing that. Um, honestly, with all due respect to my colleagues, a no vote on the expense budget at this juncture is simply grandstanding. Um, so I'm proud to vote aye. Uh, it was, the information was given out as it always has been. Uh, it's more transparent than ever, um, you know, and I know that for those who I'm are expired. interested that um, that the finance director is always interested in giving, um, you know, sessions for folks who want to ask questions. Um, I know several of our colleagues have have done that in the past, and it, it's been incredibly helpful. So I'm proud to vote yes on this November modification. Don't know why it's an issue and vote aye on all. But most importantly, I am thrilled for you, council members Torres, Cohen, and Richards. Um, you know, you, again, um, like our finance director, you make our body proud. You make us look good. And uh, you have an amazing future ahead of you. Uh, congratulations to you. Thank you for the extra time, uh, um, member, uh, leaders, majority leader Combo. Thank you. Thank you. Salamanca. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. First, I wanna congratulate my good friend. Um, and he's also, he works at the speaker's office, um, Anthony Perez on his appointment to the EDC board. Congratulations. Um, also wanna congratulate uh, Miguelina Camilo uh, uh, on her appointment uh, to the Bronx, um, as a Bronx commissioner uh, for the board of elections. We are extremely proud of her. Um, and then finally, you know, have to give two big kudos and congrats to number one, our Bronx delegation chair, um, now, Your Honor, Andy Cohen, uh, congrats on, 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 on your election to the New York State Supreme Court judge, um, and I'm proud to call you my friend. And, and of course, my, my colleague and my good friend, um, uh, council member and congressman elect Richie Torres. Um, and um, I'm proud to, to say that Richie is going to be my congressman representing me in Washington, DC. Thank you very much, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. 
Torres. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I will make um, longer comments uh, later on, I, I, um, but for the final time, uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I want to first actually acknowledge and thank the speaker, his staff, my staff, the Education Committee staff, for helping uh, me advance an important bill that will shed light on the need our kids are facing right now with remote learning. Uh, there is power and transparency. We need to know where the needs are. So there's a, we, a, lot of, a lot of good information that we'll get from this bill to better support our kids and who need it the most. So I want to begin by acknowledging that. I also want to um, mention, I, we, and I appreciate that we are co-naming a street in the honor of certainly a, a friend of mine. Uh, also, I'll include him as a mentor, someone who I, who I spoke to a number of times for wisdom and experience of Councilman Lou Fidwer. May he rest in peace. Um, you know, Lou Fidwer always, always spoke up for the marginalized, those who were forgotten by government, uh, as we've heard earlier. Uh, and during this pandemic, that's who we're fighting for right now very much, people who need help the most. I'm thinking about Lou, and this is a small token of appreciation for his work. And so I wanna thank, thank Councilman Mizell for, for advancing this. I also wanna speak up for our finance chair, Danny Drum, his staff, his team, uh, who have worked tirelessly nonstop. I wanna speak up for Latanya McKinney, the entire finance staff, finance division, who continuously be accessible to me. I'm sure others of the council reach out to them frequently about issues that we're, we're all experiencing. They have been nothing but accessible, responsive, and helpful. If there is some anger today, we should direct anger at the federal government that continues to prioritize airline CEOs over local and state governments, over our, our hospitals and schools. It's shameful that they're passing another uh, relief bill without any local and, and state aid when our communities need it the most. So I want to uh -huh. share that. And to my colleagues, Council Members Cohen uh, and Torres, Congressman Elect Torres, Councilman Cohen is one of the most honorable, honest officials I've ever had the honor of working with. And I'm going to continue to, to nudge him to show more love to the Coney Island Boardwalk because he always raves about the Rockaways Boardwalk, but show some love to Coney as well, Judge Cohen. I wish you continued success. And to Congressman Elect Torres, I want to tell you that as we speak, NYCHA is finally installing new boilers and infrastructure in Coney Island because of the work that you have led and done. Families are going to have heat and hot water on a reliable basis. I know you represent the Bronx, but folks in Coney Island will never forget that. That is what you've done, Councilman Torres. You don't do this work for friendships. You don't do this work for, for, for tweets or Facebook likes. You do it for the people. And just keep, keep at it. I am so proud to call you a friend and I'm proud to call you a congressman. And with that, I vote aye on all and wish all my colleagues a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, very happy, healthy New Year. Thank you. Council Member Ulrich. Uh, with congratulations to my colleagues who are moving up. Um, sad to see them go, but they're really terrific people. I wish them all the best. I'm voting aye on all with the exception of 1396 and 1415, which I'm voting no. Happy and healthy new year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council member Vallon. Permission to explain my vote, please? Permission granted. Time starts now. First and foremost, to our soon-to-be Judge Cohen and Congresswoman Torres, both the Judiciary and the House of Representatives are getting men of honor, men of integrity, and men who lead with their heart. And that is something we all need more of. So I'm very proud of both of you. Uh, and also included in today's package of street co-namings is one in my district for Monsignor John C. Tosi of St. Luke's Roman Catholic Church. Monsignor Tosi was a priest for over 45 years and a Monsignor for 23 years within the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens. Born in Flushing, Monsignor Tosi was ordained in May 1973 at St. John's Pro Cathedral, downtown Brooklyn. He was named as Monsignor in 1997 and in January 2005, 
was named pastor of St. Luke's, where he remained until his death. Monsignor Tosi rebuilt St. Luke's Church and made many renovations to the Queens and Parish based on his experiences with the Diocesan Liturgical Commission. He was a member of the Knights of Columbus and Whitestone and supported by the Veterans Foreign Fairs and many other local organizations such as the Whitestone Taxpayers Association. He worked hard for our quality education in St. Luke's where students and parodies and faculty were blessed to have had his guidance to support over the years. I'm proud to announce this much deserved honor for Monsignor Tosi, who is regarded as a local stalwart and a man of deep faith. We look forward to joining together with this community in the new year to celebrate his life and legacy in Northeast Queens. Um, and with that, everyone, God bless each of you. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, a happy and blessed new year, and especially to our majority leader and to our speaker who have guided us through a very, very difficult year. The two of you have given us confidence and guidance when we needed you most. So with that, happy and blessed New Year to everyone. And I vote aye on all, with the exception of 1415A. Thank you, Councilmember Vallone. Ben Bramer. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. So there's a uh, Suddenly been a lot of talk about the budget mod and I'll get to that later, but I, I, I do want to say thank you again to council members Lander and Adams, uh, not to be lost in this discussion about the budget mod is uh, the justice that uh, is going to be brought to uh, fast food workers and, uh, and I appreciate that fight and we should mark that uh, achievement. Um, and with respect to the, the budget mod. Uh, I am thankful to my colleagues, uh, council members uh, Menchaca and Reynoso for first raising this. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be voting no on the budget mod. And you know, I made a point last week that we can disagree here and it doesn't have to be personal. Uh, I think that every member who has voted no on the budget mod today made this vote because they really believed in their vote, it was a vote of conscience, and it is not an attack on Latanya McKinney, who is amazing and who we deeply respect. Uh, people can vote their conscience here uh, and not have it perceived as a personal attack on anyone. Why are we doing that to ourselves? Um, so uh, I, I praise the council members uh, who vote their conscience, however you vote your conscience, and it is not a personal attack on anyone. Uh, or in anyone's work. I also want to say I'm voting no on M264, M265, M266, the accompanying resos, obviously M269, Reso 1513. Um, and I have a couple of co-namings. One, the famous Whitey Ford, who was a Yankee pitcher, even though I'm wearing a Met cap. Um, but more important to me is Don McCallion, uh, who was a veteran, who was an incredible civic leader in Sunnyside. Uh, and I just want to call his name because he meant so much uh, to our community. He was not famous, um, but what he did was change the lives of thousands and thousands of people in his community. So with much love uh, to Don McCallion, thank you very much. Thank you, council member. Thank you, council member Van Bram, can I just clarify uh, both budget mod items or just one? My apologies. Yes, if we are saying uh, M269 and Reso 1513 and M270 yeah. and Reso 1514. Okay. Yes, thank you, I just want to thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Starts now. Thank you. Um, first, I, I would like to echo uh, the words of, of my colleagues here on the floor today uh, who invoked the name of the very great and unfortunately late Lou Fiddler. Um, he was more than a friend to me. He was a mentor. He was family. Um, we celebrated our joyous occasions together. We celebrated our tragedies together. Um, I loved him. Uh, his family uh, is incredible and they're still my friends and, and I love them all. Um, and I frequently find myself uh, before a vote uh, asking what would Lou do? Uh, today, I believe my votes will channel uh, what Lou would do. Uh, some of those reasons I'll state now and some I'll just keep to myself for now. Um, first, uh, with respect to uh, the budget modification, I, like many members of this body, voted against the budget. Uh, we all had our different reasons for doing so. 
uh, for the second meeting in a row, I find myself uh, thanking uh, Councilman Van Bramer for his words. Uh, so true. I do not agree with the members um, who are voting against the budget mod today, not because I think they're grandstanding. I think they are making a decision based on their feeling. I, having voted against the budget uh, in June, on June 30th, actually July 1st, shortly after midnight, I will nonetheless vote in favor of the budget mod. The budget mod um, uh, provides, um, there's a lot of things in the budget mod I don't like. There's a lot of spending I don't like. Um, I think there's a lot of waste uh, and I think we could do better. But we're putting $28 million into parks. We're putting $136 million into the Department of Sanitation, nearly $10 million into the Department of Health, um, uh, uh, enormous amount of money into the Department of Education, small business services getting another $3 million. I'm rattling them off. EMS is getting another $20 million. There are things we need to do in this budget mod, and that's why I'm voting yes. However, the, the gentlemen, uh, the members of this council who voted against it um, have great I'm honor and apologize, uh, for, for expressing their viewpoint on this topic, and I honor them. Um, I, okay, let me just state my votes. I'm sorry, Madam President. My votes are aye on all, uh, with the exception of uh, introduction 1396, introduction 1415, on which I vote no. And on introduction 2187, I respectfully abstain. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilmember Yeager. Okay. Councilmember Ku. Uh, I have no more uh, comments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Levin. Uh, I just wanted to speak in general general discussion. Okay, thank you. And Council Member Barron. You muted Council Member. Yes, thank you so much. I hmm? thank you for that. I was called because I wanted to make a correction in one of my votes. Uh, but before I do that, I do want to say to my colleague Danny Drum. He's a good friend of mine. I appreciate him. We have a common background of teaching and I respect the work that he does. Latanya McKinney, I have often publicly commended for the great work that she does. I have a different opinion and I take exception from my colleague and do not embrace the description of grand standing. And I want that on the record. In terms of correcting my vote, um, I'm voting no, not on 694, but on 696, 697, and 698, as I had done in the committee meetings. And also regarding LU703, the landmarking of PS48, I just want to put on the record that the cartouche that is a part of the architectural design on that building is in fact an Egyptian hieroglyph, which the Egyptians called a Shinu. And it is an oval with a horizontal line that includes other texts and hieroglyphs. And it became known as a cartouche because when the French soldiers invaded Egypt, they saw that symbol. And for them, it reminded them of where they kept their ammunition, which they called a cartouche. So I just wanted to put that little historical tidbit into the notes as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Thank you. Councilmember Matteo. Thank you. I'm voting no on 1396 and 1415. I want to congratulate and wish Andy and Richie, uh, good friends of mine, uh, good luck. I know you do well and make us all proud. I wish everybody Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a happy, healthy, and safe uh, New Year. And looking forward to seeing everyone in the new year. Thank you. Councilmember Cumbo. Thank you. I just want to again celebrate all of my colleagues. Um, I'm so excited to uh, see what you're going to do in your life. Councilmember Richie Torres, I know you are going to take Congress by storm. We're all going to be saying we know him. Um, and just to see you rise on the national stage is just going to be they don't know what they're in for. You are gonna be such a strong and powerful voice. 
And I know you're going to make history there on so many different levels. And to my colleague and friend, Andy Cohen, I'm so excited to see your, your expansion and how you're going to grow. I'm going to miss us discussing all of the things that we're going to do that we never did. Um, but I'm excited to see this growth. And for Donovan, wow, the first African-American man elected to the Queensborough president. We know your story. You are going to inspire so many African-American men and women in the borough of Queens who can relate to your story, can relate to your challenges as well as your triumphs. And to see you in that position is going to give so many um, people, particularly of color, particularly black men, hope um, at a time when uh, it's, they're so challenged in so many different ways. So we appreciate your courage and your tenacity, and it's an honor to see you in that position. And I proudly vote aye on all. Speaker Johnson. Vote aye on all. And I, again, want to uh, tell Richie and Andy that I really am going to miss them. Uh, they are uh, friends and great colleagues. Uh, I'm really happy for both of them and their families. I know Richie's mom is just so proud of him. Uh, and uh, I know Andy's wife is probably happy that he's leaving the New York City Council. So to both of them, uh, I'm really, um, you know, really proud of both of you. Uh, you both have done a wonderful job over the last seven years. You have been great colleagues, great elected officials for the communities that you uh, represent. Uh, and uh, I'm going to miss you guys, but uh, I know that we will continue to stay in touch and uh, we'll be following Richie's uh, path in just the next few weeks when he's going to be casting really important votes for the future of our country, but also for the future of New York City. And I couldn't think of a better advocate to be part of the New York City delegation, uh, fighting for public housing residents, fighting for mass transit, fighting for people who are food insecure right now, fighting for New York's most vulnerable, and fighting for other LGBT young people who were raised in New York City in public housing like Richie. And, uh, you know, I didn't go to college, Richie didn't go to college, uh, but somehow through mentorship, uh, Richie had Jimmy Vaca uh, to be able to uh, be a, a real role model and trailblazer for many people who are gonna look at Richie's story and what he's been able to accomplish uh, in his uh, short life thus far. Uh, is just a really heroic and inspiring, and I look forward to continuing. I look forward to continue to 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 watch his meteoric rise and to cheer him on as he does everything he can to uplift our city uh, during one of the most difficult times. I know he's gonna when he when he puts his hand up and takes that pledge uh, to be a member of the House of Representatives. I know he is going to do everything he can to look out for our city, and uh, and and I I am really grateful to him and grateful for our friendship. So I vote aye on all. I wanna again, wish everyone a happy holidays and a safe and happy new year. And with that, Madam Majority Leader, I turn it back to you. Thank you. And before we have uh, the vote tally presented to us, we are going to do something that we have not done on Zoom, but we would traditionally do if we were in the chambers. So we are going to unmute everyone and we are going to give a standing ovation for Richie Torres, for our very good friend who's going off to do great things, Andy Cohen, as well as our great friend, Donovan Richards. Let's stand up and give them a round of applause. Hey. So Woo! proud of you. So proud. All right. Councilmember Brown, you had your hand raised for you, you muted, muted. That's for council. general discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay, no problem. All items on today's general order calendar have a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. With the exception of the following bills, 
Introduction 1396A has a vote of 40 in the affirmative, six in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 1415A with a vote of 39 in the affirmative, seven in the negative, no abstentions. Land use items 696, 697, and 698 with their accompanying resolutions have a vote of 44 in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions. M269 in resolution 1513 has a vote of 40 in the affirmative, six in the negative, no abstentions. M270 in resolution 1514 has a vote of 42 in the affirmative, four in the negative, no abstentions. Resolution 1445A has a vote of 45 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions. M264, 265, and 266 with an accompanying resolutions has 45 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions. And one moment. Introduction 2187 has a vote of 44 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and two abstentions. Thank you. Majority Leader, you're on mute. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Torres, Cohen, Cornegie, and Levin. We'll have them lead us off. We have several more after that. Okay, we'll begin with Council Member Torres. Uh, thank you. There's something you know, strange and anticlimactic about leaving uh, the council on Zoom, but I'll, I'll make the best of it. I first want to share some news. I just found out uh, that I was appointed to the Committee on Financial Services. Uh, so I'm going to continue my advocacy for public housing um, in Congress. You know, I, I spent all of my adult life in the city council. Uh, in 2006, I served as an intern. In 2008, I became an employee. In 2014, I became a member. So it's no exaggeration to say that the city council has been my home. You know, always has been, and in a deeper sense, always will be. Um, in 2005, when I was in high school, I met then district manager, Jimmy Vaca, through my legendary principal, Robert Leader, who happened to have been a professor for Mark Traeger. And uh, that fateful encounter with Jimmy Vaca is what sent me on a journey from the New York City Council to the United States Congress, from public housing to the House of Representatives. And I never imagined this happening. And I'm just so proud of the legislation that I've passed as a city council member, the hearings that I've held, but I'm proudest of the, the friendships that I have forged. I am grateful to each and every one of my colleagues. I feel like I am a better person and will be a better congressperson for having known each and every one of you. And I'm gonna be a better person and a better congressperson for having been a member of this family. I wanna, there's so many people to thank um, and I'm gonna reach out to colleagues individually to thank them, but I wanna uh, single out three people. You, you know, when I first entered the city council as the chair of the committee on public housing, my committee council was at Atkin. And as I'm leaving the city council, the director of oversight and investigations is Ed. And I have to say Ed is the most talented person that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And the council is so lucky to have him and I consider it an honor to have worked with him. Uh, I wanna thank Jason. You know, the most important responsibility we have as elected officials is constituent services, but we, the electeds, need constituent services ourselves. And I've never met someone more devoted 
to member services uh, than Jason. And I know he's part of a great tradition of chiefs of staff that includes Ramon Martinez and Kevin McCabe, who have all been friends and mentors to me. And I wanna thank my friend, Corey Johnson, the speaker. Uh, I remember in 2017, in December of 2017, when I emerged from a bruising and brutal legislative battle, I felt like a broken man. I was depressed. And um, it was not clear what my future was gonna look like. There was no one who was more supportive of me in my moment of vulnerability than you were. So I just wanna Thanks, Richie. I love you. We're friends for life. Uh, thank you for being there for me. I mean, I feel like you gave me the strength to renew myself as an elected official. And I feel like I would have never made it to Congress without the generosity that you have shown me. So I'm honored to call you my friend. I'm honored to call you my speaker. And I just want you to know public service needs you. And I'm going to be there for you, no matter what you pursue. So thank you for your friendship. And thank you, everyone. Thanks, Richie. Okay, I got all caught up in that. <laughs> Council Member Cohen. Thank you, Madam Majority. Uh, can I tell you something that I've tried to avoid for the last uh, several years is uh, following Council Member Torres uh, <laughs> because he is so smart, so articulate, uh, such a powerful speaker and so sincere. Uh, Richie, congratulations to you. Uh, uh, you know, I'm so proud to know you, and I know that you are going to do great things in, in, in the House of Representatives. It's amazing. Uh, I, too, want to uh, uh, thank uh, the speaker for his friendship uh, and his support. Uh, you know, that support has really made a difference in my own district, uh, and I'm very grateful to it for your support and the impact it's had on the people I represent. Um, to all of my colleagues, uh, you know, I, I'd like to believe that I'm going to leave uh, the city of New York, the city council better than I found it, but I am certain uh, that I am better uh, for having served in the city council, uh, gotten to know all of you. Uh, your, your diverse perspectives have made me a better person, uh, learning and listening from you. Uh, all that we bring together here has just profoundly changed me uh, uh, forever, and I'm going to bring that with me uh, onto the bench uh, if, in service of the people of the Bronx. Uh, so for all of that, I am very, very grateful. I too want to thank uh, uh, Jason for uh, his support and, and making uh, making things work around here for me. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Uh, uh, Lewis, congratulations on passing the bar and to really all the staff who uh, make us all look good, who made me look good over the years. So thank you very, very much. Uh, you will, you know, I will miss you all. I know I'm going to uh, stay in contact with you and. Uh, uh, I appreciate the friendship and uh, I wish you all a productive uh, 2021. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andy. We're gonna Thank miss you. Thank you. We're gonna miss you. Congratulations to, to Heather and Sarah as well for gonna be able to spend more time with you. They are thrilled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Council Member Carnegie. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, uh, I, I, it's not goodbye, but farewell to Richie and Andy, um, and, and a special shout out to, um, to somebody who was a real, a real mensch, uh, Lou Fidler, who was a mentor, uh, not just to his community, but to communities that were ancillary to his and to me in particular. So thank you all. Uh, for me, this theme today is finding balance. I started this year hoping that we could be more thoughtful, that we could help one group without pitching them against the other. We're attempting to find balance with bills like 2151B and 2171A, gas explosions injure and kill New Yorkers with seeming inevitability. This was one of the reasons the city passed crafted rules for improved gas line inspections with possible $10,000 penalties for failure to file the inspection certificate before December 31st. Intro 2151B recognizes that COVID-19 pandemic made this date possibly uh, not possible. Similarly, the city has suffered a number of carbon monoxide deaths and injuries. Just, uh, just last month, two men in Bensonhurst died of carbon monoxide. They were roommates in a basement apartment with no carbon monoxide detector. Had there been one, these men might be alive. 
Proposed intro 2171A, which I sponsored, will extend the deadline for carbon monoxide detector installation from January 1st, 2021 to January 1st, July 2021. We are need the detectors, but the pandemic means we must adjust to current circumstances. We can do better. I support fast food workers and I'll gladly vote just cause protections, but I'll also work to make sure we support small business owners. I don't think we've reached our goal of helping both workers and small entrepreneurs simultaneously. It's too easy for us to be satisfied with the progressive, with the progress we've achieved. Right now, many people are celebrating because Major League Baseball recognized the statistics of Negro Leagues from 1920 to 1948. We have to come to grips with our history of segregation, especially here in the North. Yet this leaves out some important Brooklynites. The Brooklyn Royal Giants were founded in 1905 and were champions in the Negro Leagues in 1908. I'm, I'm incredibly proud that we're that the very first documented baseball game between two black teams included athletes from my district. Our local team was called the Unknowns. And while we lost in, 19, in 1859, there were leaders in national sports that started decades before the MLB. Finally, today the city council will consider honoring the life of Yusef, Yusef Hawkins with a street co-naming. But I fervently wish we did not have to honor the lives of young black men who get killed this way. His life was cut short in Bensonhurst, the same neighborhood as the carbon monoxide victims whose lives were cut short in November. I pray we can do better in 2021. I wanna dedicate my actions to becoming more reflective, more insightful. We will get there through mutual respect and dedication to really listening to each other. Thank you all and happy holidays. Thank you, Councilmember Cornegie. I'm going to turn it over to Speaker Johnson. Yes, uh, Madam Majority, thank you for calling on me. I was remiss, and I said this when our former colleague Lou Fiddler passed, but I, I wanted to just repeat it today because it is so important, and I want people to always associate this with his memory. Uh, Lou Fiddler uh, chaired the Youth Services Committee in the City Council, and year after year after year, during the Bloomberg years when uh, money was attempted to be cut for homeless youth, specifically homeless LGBT youth, Lou Fiddler became the champion, the champion for young people who were homeless in New York City, especially LGBT children who had faced parental rejection and were living on the streets or the subways or in shelters. Lou was their champion and Lou would go to those shelters Lou would go and do street outreach. Lou would go to the Alifornia Center. Lou would go to Covenant House in my district. Lou would do this work year in and year out when cameras were not around. I think it speaks to the type of human being that Lou Fiddler was. That as a man that represented uh, a district that probably didn't have many folks uh, or a huge number of folks uh, from uh, these communities, uh, Lou saw himself as their protector and as someone who was gonna make sure that if their parents were not there for them, he was going to be there for them. And that tells you what you need to know about Lou Fiddler. So uh, on this day that so many New Yorkers are being uh, remembered, our former colleague Lou Fiddler did uh, an inordinate amount for LGBT people and for homeless children across New York City. And on this cold day, on this day with almost a foot of snow, I was actually thinking of Lou last night thinking about the number of people who are trying to get a warm roof over their head. So I just wanted to take a moment. I didn't do it in the speaker's remarks. I should have, but I wanted to do it here today to remember our colleague, Lou Fiddler, for always being a champion for the vulnerable. And uh, I'm really proud we're doing this today. And I hope that someone will send this to his wife, uh, his late wife, Robin, uh, so that she can see the praise and love and accolades uh, that he is receiving today because the Fiddler family deserves this as well. Thank you very much, Madam Drew Leader. I turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. We share those sentiments as well. Council Member Levin, followed by Council Member Lander. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I was remiss now. earlier. Oh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I was remiss earlier. Uh, there are two street co namings in my district today that I want to acknowledge. The first is firefighter John Jack Toomey Way on White Street between Sackett and Union Streets in the borough of Brooklyn. Um, firefighter Toomey uh, died tragically on December 6, 1987. He was assigned to Brooklyn Ladder Company 123 and he died in the line of duty when he suffered a heart attack while fighting a fire in a building on Crown Street in Brooklyn. Um, we are also uh, co-naming, so my, my, uh, my heart goes out to, to firefighter Toomey's family. 
Um, we are also um, co-naming uh, St. Raphael of Brooklyn Place on State Street between Hoyt Street and Bond in the bro borough of Brooklyn. Um, uh, Raphael Hawaiini uh, was the first Orthodox bishop consecrated in North America in 1904. He founded The Word, which is the official news magazine of the Antio Antiochian uh, Archdiocese, which is still published month monthly today and informs readers of Orthodox news and also educates and inspires with articles on faith and practice. Um, uh, I wanna thank uh, the residents on State Street um, for their continued advocacy to make that happen. And lastly, um, I, was, uh, I was thinking about our colleague Lou Fiddler um, and um, I think uh, Council Member Barron will appreciate this, that um, one of, the, one of the memories that will stick with me forever of the New York City Council is being in Brooklyn delegation and hearing debates between Lou Fiddler and Charles Barron. And um, uh, you know, when I was, I was young, when I first entered the council. And so for me, I was like, I would sit back and, and, and watch and think this is just the greatest job in the world uh, to be able to be um, uh, with these two remarkable men. And so um, that's one I think of a lot and uh, my heart goes out to Robin and the family. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Levin. Council Member Lander. Time Thank starts you. now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I admit I'm still a little choked up by, uh, by Richie. Um, I want to add my thanks to Jason for his work on the Just Cause bills. And I want to add my name to those who really looked up to Lou Fiddler. He, he had admirers across ideological and many other, many other lines. Um, I am very excited to be a co-sponsor of the Speaker's Comprehensive Planning Legislation. I want to give him great credit uh, for taking leadership here. It's not easy during a crisis to think about the long term but it's so important. We've seen so many of the flaws of our planning process in this crisis, segregation, inequality, underinvestment, in infrastructure, a housing affordability crisis, what it looks like to be unprepared. And we all know that our reactive land use process is not getting the job done right now. We don't start from shared goals and values. So how could we achieve shared goals and values? Um, I'm not gonna talk more about it here, but I hope you'll take a look at it. This body could make a big difference for the future of our city. If we can follow the speaker's lead, I wanna give props to council member Reynoso and some of the advocates, a &HD, Pratt, um, and the staff, Lewis, Kelly, Raju, and especially the amazing Annie Levers. Um, the report does not just call out problems, it really gets into the weeds and gives us some real solutions. And I hope we have the courage across those lines of difference to walk forward into it. I wanna acknowledge some transitions in my office. This is the last city council stated meeting for four of my staff. Uh, Naz Garabalas, Def Silkowski and Naomi Dan have been an amazing part of our team and served the people of the 39th district tremendously well. And I need to say a special word about Rachel Goodman who has been my chief of staff for the past 10 years, literally since day one of my time in the council. Uh, she's a behind the scenes leader. So the people of our district don't necessarily know her and how lucky they are to have her there, but we do. Um, they aren't going far away. So if you're looking for them, I could still get you in touch, uh, but we're really gonna miss them here uh, in the council. Um, and finally, in that spirit, I just wanna say a big congratulations to the New York City Council Union, uh, the Association for Legislative Employees, the first legislative body in the state. Uh, thank you to the speaker for voluntarily recognizing the finance staff as the first bargaining unit. It is a great step and a credit to you. Uh, I'm looking forward to recognize, to our recognizing the member staff as well who are seeking recognition. I'm proud to be part of a legislative body that knows it's our staff who do the work and that like all workers deserve workplace rights and dignity and respect. And I'm excited that we're taking that step today. Thank you, Speaker, for that voluntary recognition. Uh, with that, I wish you all bright holidays in dark times. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Lander. We'll now hear from Council Member Barron followed by Council Member Yeager. Time starts now. You're muted. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you once again. I just want to extend my best wishes to Council Member Torres as he goes to Congress and Council Member Cohen as he goes to the Supreme Court. And I just pray that you will continue to be vigorous in fighting on behalf of our people. Uh, at our last stated, it was on the same day as the Human Rights Day. And I don't know that we made mention of that. December 10th was chosen to honor you, the UN's adoption and proclamation of December 10th, 1948 
of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And it's the first global enunciation of human rights. And although it is not a binding document, it is one that has been widely accepted. And it talks about the broad range of political, civil, economic, social, and cultural rights that are uh, a gift to all people. And it holds that the world needs to record uh, these violations when they occur and address them. So there are 30 articles that detail human basic rights and fundamental freedoms. And it talks about uh, that people have an inalienable, inherent and applicable right to these rights as human beings. And it talks about dignity, liberty, equality, freedom of movement, freedom of thought, freedom of opinion, freedom of conscience, it talks about healthcare, it talks about a standard of living, additional accommodations for those who are physically debilitated or disabled, and care for mothers and for children. So I just wanted to bring that to our thoughts as we talk about um, what it is that we want to see in our communities, in our society, and the challenges that we have. And I wish everyone a great holiday, stay safe, enjoy your families, and do what you know is the right thing to do and get some time to restore and refresh and reflect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Barron. And now we will hear from Councilmember Yeager. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I intended to, to speak about uh, my two departing colleagues earlier, but the whole conversation about the budget mod, the uh, clock ran me out or I ran it out. Um, but before I do that, first, I, I want to thank the speaker again for his words about Lou Fiddler. I don't know that two minutes or four minutes or 12 minutes or 20 minutes can ever do any of us uh, uh, proper in giving Lou all the honor that he deserves. But I don't know that there's a single member here who in some way, uh, whether he or she even knows it, hasn't been affected by Lou's work uh, in the city, uh, in, in his community, in all of our communities and here in the council. Um, and uh, uh, I frequently, disagree with uh, Councilman Lander, but I will say that he's probably right on uh, the part where Lou is a great uniter in many ways, including for people from very uh, far reaching points of the political spectrum. But I know he was a friend of Corey's and uh, the speaker's words uh, are, are so important because it really does uh, honor who Lou was, somebody who really figured out ways to bring uh, communities together from all across the city. Um, to Congressman elect Torres and uh, Justice Elect Cohen, I have the privilege of serving under you both uh, on committees. Um, uh, the speaker's use of a Yiddish word earlier today, uh, sometimes people who use Yiddish don't get it right, but uh, Corey got it right. You're, you're, you're both a mensch and um, uh, everything you do and every way you've done it. Uh, I know you'll bring honor and integrity to your next jobs. Um, I, I've been privileged to know you both. Before you, I came to the council, we don't always agree. Um, but I find that that's my way about a lot of people here. Um, uh, you've nonetheless uh, treated your job with great integrity, uh, with care, uh, your work with compassion and importance, and you've done this body a great honor, and me a great honor uh, by having the privilege that to serve. Uh, so I wish you both uh, good luck, Godspeed. Uh, Richie's job is incredible during these times uh, to go to Congress and to, to have to work to deliver to New York uh, in a Congress that uh, may not be so amenable to doing so. And uh, Judge Cohen uh, delivering justice is, is probably one of the most important things a lawyer can ever get to do. Uh, so God bless you both and happy Hanukkah to all who are still celebrating. Merry Christmas and a happy and a healthy 2021. Be well. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. Are there any other members, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader, Council Member Dharma Diaz and Council Member Rosenthal. Time starts now. Hi, I, I'll be quick, but I, I wanted to share my Lou Fittler story. When I worked for the assembly was when I learned of him and so thanks to social media, we became stronger friends. One day I posted, I had a cold. He went and bought me chicken soup. I made it his business and I got my soup and sharing with him. And I was born in Williamsburg and always heard of stuff. Derma had never tried it. He made it his business to make a date for his wife and I 
So I could taste the stuff, Derma. Um, the moment that Lou took time for me, I, I felt validated in, in my process and running for city council. So thank you, Lou, for looking out for this little girl in Brooklyn and stretching your hands out and for the times that we shared and for all of you that shared your interactions with Lou, thank you for sharing your experiences as well. That's thank all. you so much. Next, we have Council Member Rosenthal. Time starts now. Thank you so much. Um, you know, we are at a dire time in our city's um, economic crisis. And there is a uh, revenue option that the state could support that I think is low hanging fruit. And that would be to add a mortgage recording tax to any sort of secondary or tertiary debt that corporate developers take out. So I'm going to introduce a resolution today on this in support of Assemblyman Harvey Epstein and State Senator Julia Salazar's bills that call for this at the state level. I urge my colleagues to sign on. And if you'll, you'll give me just one minute, you know, I, I'd like to try to explain this. It's really a super easy idea. You know how uh, for those who are lucky enough to buy a home, they, they pay a mortgage recording tax because most people can't pay cash, you take out debt and you pay the city 0.8% um, of, that, of that debt actually and you pay the state 1%, it's called a mortgage recording tax. But you know, big corporate developers like Extel, when they build a huge luxury condominium, they don't just take out one debt. No, they, they take out whatever it is, they pay their mortgage recording tax, but then they borrow more money. And when they borrow that more money, they don't have to pay a mortgage recording tax. And then they might say, they might, someone else might buy it and then borrow again, and maybe borrow debt from a bank or a, another type of lender and they don't pay a mortgage recording tax. In fact, when they do that borrowing, the public doesn't even know about it. It's all private borrowing from a bank or whatever. So unlike normal human beings who have to pay a mortgage recording tax when they borrow for their home, these corporate developers are getting away with getting riskier and riskier debt not having to tell anyone about it and not having to pay a mortgage recording tax. So I really urge my colleagues to sign on to this resolution. It's exciting, it's sort of low hanging fruit and it could help us and it could help the city with hundreds of millions of dollars turning into billion dollars in the years to come. Thank you very much and happy holidays everyone. I hope everyone gets a good break. Thank you so much, Council Member Rosenthal, and happy holidays to you too. I'm very excited. Today we are making history in the spirit of the Black Lives Matter movement as we vote on the co-naming of designated streets and squares in order to take back our historical narrative, in order to recognize those who have made it their life's work to uplift Brooklynites for generations to come. I'm excited to see Putnam Triangle Plaza at Fulton and Grand Avenue in my district renamed G2 Wayus Plaza, formerly known as Leslie R. Campbell. G2 Wayus was a longtime educator and activist. Born and raised in Brooklyn, G2 spent decades serving as an educator and activist as a founding member of the African American Teachers Association. Perhaps what he is best known for is being one of the lead voices on the Brownsville Ocean Hill experiment in which communities were able to take back control of their schools and to make sure that they had representation that looked just like them within their school districts. This was a powerful act that resonated all throughout the nation. What I'm also so very proud of is that being born from Brooklyn, New York, he was the most powerful man and architect of the Black Power Movement in Brooklyn, New York. And he founded an organization called The East. Originally located just blocks from the Putnam Triangle Plaza at 10 Claver Place, 
The E served as a community hub for childcare, adult education classes, as well as a bookstore, food co-op, and bi-weekly Black nationalist news publication. It would also serve as a home for the Uhuru Sasa Shule School, the Freedom Now School, the first Black independent private school for inner city youth, who was under the umbrella of the East Community and Central Center in Brooklyn, New York. The annual events run by the East included the International African Arts Festival, one of the largest African art festivals in the city of New York, an annual weekend that began in Bed-Stuy but has now grown uh, to Commodore Barry Park. It is only right that we recognize G2YUC's historical contributions to our community in the place where it all began. Many may know him from Jazz 966 and many other endeavors that he continued to do. Alongside G2YUC, ours, he worked with our very good friend, Council Member Albert Van. And we also want to recognize Dr. Sam Penn Jr., who dedicated his life to uplifting Brooklyn's Black community. He was a veteran of the Army Reserves, holder of two JDs and a licensed Master of Social Work. His accolades do not stop at this personal achievement. In May 1973, he helped found and then served as the chairman of the Fort Greene Council, Inc. Under his leadership, the council expanded its sponsorship of senior centers, offering a range of comprehensive services from its first center located in Fort Greene, Clinton Hills, to its present sponsorship of 13 centers located throughout Brooklyn. Many of you may have seen Dr. Penn here at city council with dozens and dozens of children fighting for daycares and to keep them opened. During one such visit at City Hall, he actually fainted and had to be rushed to the hospital, fighting for our youth and fighting for our children. The work that he has done has created within the Fort Greene Council, two child care centers, Compass and UPK for Alls. He was a visionary who also worked with G2YUC in the creation of Jazz 966 in order to make sure that jazz was presentable and affordable to people all throughout the community. I want to continue to celebrate these two individuals. These are two giants, and it took an entire Black Lives Matter movement to make it happen. And I'll just close with, uh, we have many others, but I wanna close with Ida B. Wells Plaza, currently known as Times Plaza, which is located in front of the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. As we were all aware, this was the space that people converged and they met to talk about the lynching of Black men and women all throughout our society. It is only fitting that we would have the space right outside of the Barclays Center known for Ida B. Wells, who was a freedom fighter and fought for the rights of Black people to vote, but also to end the horrific practice of lynching throughout this country. I'm going to close there, but I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson. I want to thank Jason Goldman. I want to thank my staff, Jason Herr and Alicia Mercedes, and everyone who worked to make this happen. But this victory is really the victory of the Black Lives Matter movement, because if not for you, we would still be in a place at this time fighting for the power to name our own communities, to name our heroes, and to name who are the people that we represent in our community. With that, I will turn it back to Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's meeting. Thank Madam you. Majority Leader, before turning it to Speaker Johnson, Councilmember Grudenchik would like to be recognized. All right. I will make it quick. <laughs> Time starts now. Barry, you're muted, so you're not making it quick. I just want to <laughs> remind people, and I want to thank Speaker Johnson and my colleague Steve Levin and Danny Drum. People are going hungry in this city, and I know there is an effort now to renew what we have done previously this year. Please remember these people. They're our brothers and our sisters, our fellow New Yorkers. And those are my words. A happy and healthy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. That was the Thank quickest you. Barry Grudenchik has ever been in his, not just adult life, but entire life. <laughs> the state <laughs> meeting of December 17th, 2020 is hereby adjourned. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy New Year. Everyone be safe. Thank you all very much. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Happy holidays, everyone.